from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. This is U.S. Farm Report. Merry Christmas and welcome to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. We're spreading joy this Christmas weekend. Keeping the childlike wonder of the holiday alive. Being on a family farm means a lot of different things to us. It means uh, tradition, it means, you know, building something together as a family. From beating cancer twice to now spreading joy to others year round. I had this idea of what if I created something while I was still here. That way I could control its roots and its foundation. And then whenever I graduate to heaven, that people could continue that living legacy for me. How Brooke Taylor and the Rural Gone Urban Foundation is investing in strong women doing brave things with grit and grace. And in John's world. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire in the future. Well, it's only fitting we bring you the show from a Christmas tree farm this year. We're here at Smith Lodge Christmas Trees, a family owned Christmas tree farm in Oric, Missouri, who's seen demand for real Christmas trees grow since 2020. And as we kick off our show this weekend, raising real Christmas trees has been full of challenges the past few years. But unlike many reports, family farmers have been able to meet the demand of those wanting to start or continue family traditions. From songs like Rocking Around the Christmas Tree to Oh Christmas Tree, the Christmas tree is the centerpiece of Christmas. They've reported a Christmas tree shortage for years now, for seven years. And we've never run out of Christmas trees. Marsha Gray is the executive director of the Real Christmas Tree Board, the checkoff for Christmas tree farmers. Our supply numbers are actually lower than they were 15 or 20 years ago. So that part is true, um, but we've never not met the demand. Even with the whiplash of weather, Gray says those challenges don't cut into the supply for that year. So it's very rare that a weather event in the existing year impacts the trees we're trying to sell this year. What it does impact in most cases are the seedlings, the new plantings. The main Christmas tree production areas in the U.S. are Oregon, Wisconsin, Michigan, and North Carolina. And the extreme heat in the Pacific Northwest did throw a curveball to growers. And they were hitting like 118 degrees in June. And what that did, it didn't kill trees, what it did is we have all that flush new growth on the and the ends. That's where you get all the pretty new 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 branches. While weather can be a battle for future trees, it's the cost of trucking and freight that added to the cost of trees this year. The average cost of a Christmas tree was up 10% year over year. But as younger families look to embrace tradition, Gray says they're also buying a product that benefits the environment. The trees themselves, um, because their farm we're replanting it's a constant cycle of renewing and sustaining that and consumers when they're done with the tree at the end it is 100 percent biodegradable it's just going to go back to the earth from the environment to the economy gray says christmas tree farmers from across the country are meeting a growing demand not just at home but abroad we export christmas trees to dubai to mexico to you know the middle east all kinds of interesting places <laughs> An American-grown product helping make Christmas memories year after year. Well, up next, it's a white Christmas for many this year, but a bitterly cold one, too. We'll have a check of weather this Christmas weekend next. I value the good things in life. Great food, comfortable clothes, the perfect pour at the end of a long day, and the hardworking people who bring quality products to life. So I've teamed up with my friends at Nutrinac Solutions and Farm Journal to explore the journey from seed to shelf and to get to know the growers who dedicate their lives to making it happen. How are growers feeding a growing world? Come with me to find out. I'm Brett Griffin. This is Leading the Field. Take your conservation to the next level 
The NRCS Conservation Stewardship Program pays producers for practices you're already doing on your farm or ranch, while providing technical support and additional incentives to adopt new ones. More than 150 practices are eligible for working lands, rangeland, pastures, farmsteads, and forests. Don't miss out on this cost-sharing opportunity for next year. Visit your local service center or farmers.gov today. Every year, the Wiffles family celebrates the season the best way they know how. And every year, they add a little something new. After all this time, you'd think all that extra work put into every last detail would get old. Well, think again. Wiffles Hybrids. Season's greetings from our U.S. farm family to yours. U.S. Farm Report weather is brought to you by H&S Manufacturing. Poly sides, floor, and a rear monoblock gearbox on vertical beater models are just some of the great features of the H&S Hydra Push 425 and 550 bushel model manure spreaders. Find out more about the Hydra Push at the H&S website. Meteorologist Matt Urasavik joining us this weekend. Matt, Merry Christmas, and it's bittersweet as this is your last weekend that you'll be joining us on the show. Matt, I speak for all of our viewers when I say we're really going to miss you. That's right, Ty. This is going to be the last time I'm on the show, but I'm still going to be doing weather in part of the country. You'll have to keep following me, though, to figure out where that is as we approach the new year. But for now, I wanted to go over your forecast one more time, focusing on temperatures and precip as we head through the new year and into January. As we head through this week, though, we've got a little bit of a dip in the jet stream here, some moisture moving eastward, and then another storm system bringing more heavier rain and even some mountain snow back in the west. That's through the middle part of the week, but then we are going to see that storm system kind of encroach on the middle part of the country and eventually move up the east coast as well. But if you notice warmer air in the east, something that we haven't seen here in the last week or two due to that Arctic blast, some cooler air up to the north, but not nearly as cold as what we saw last week. Temperatures this week are going to be above normal for most of the lower 48, except for the southeast coast here. Something we'll definitely keep an eye on there. But if we look at the precipitation this week, this is where we're going to see a lot more of this in the southeast through the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic and all the way back towards the west coast. Not going to see a whole lot in Texas, but it's really up here. Four corners through the northern Rockies and back towards the Pacific Northwest. A big system is going to be moving in, kind of bringing an onslaught of heavy precipitation. That could be some rain, some mountain snow, and uh, we're going to be having a mixed bag here as we head towards the end of the year. And eventually, some of that moves into the middle part of the country as we head into uh, the weekend and into next week as well. Then we want to take a look at January because this is stepping into 2023, taking a look here deeper into the winter months. And if you look, there's not a whole lot of blue on our map. We've got below normal temperatures up here in the north, above normal back there in the southwest parts of California and Nevada. Most of the country under that uh, regular gray, regular color there, we're going to be near normal above normal though from Texas through the Gulf Coast and Florida and then up the East Coast as well all the way into New England dealing with a little bit warmer than average temperatures as we head through the month of January. Then as we look at precipitation above normal in the Pacific Northwest, Northern Plains and the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, but it's the South and the Gulf Coast again, which are going to be dealing with less precipitation uh, than normal. And that's something that could linger into the month of February time back to you. Well, when we come back, there are many traditional Christmas songs that remind us of traditions of years past. But John answers a burning question this Christmas weekend. Why can't we roast chestnuts on an open fire? That's next. What's next doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen by chance. What's next happens when experience meets expertise, when data meets dollars, and when steel meets earth. What's next happens when the promising work of Pioneer's state-of-the-art research centers meets the unsparing challenges of more than 17,000 on-farm trials. Our ultimate goal is to bring the next seed breakthrough to your fields because Pioneer isn't just our name, it's our mission. Pioneer, what's next happens here. I doubt that can ever happen. I'm going to want to see some uh, some trials or something.
It'd be a good thing if it worked. We think you'll agree. The one constant in this business, change. It only makes sense then to have machines that are capable of it. That's why we created the new Fent Rogator 900 series sprayer with two height adjustable clearance. Turns out change can be a good thing. It's your business, and when you're behind the wheel, you expect results. With triple herbicide tolerance, the Roundup Ready Extend crop system featuring ExtendFlex soybeans controls more weeds than any other soybean system, all backed by decades of innovation and the Spray Early Weed Control Guarantee, which means you get additional flexibility and control so you can add to your bottom line. Because you mean business, and so do we. Well, if you're like me, listening to traditional Christmas songs is a favorite pastime this time of year. But not all songs ring true today. Here's John Phipps. One of the most durable of all the standard Christmas songs played nonstop during this time of year is the Christmas song. If that unimaginative title doesn't ring any silver bells with you, that's because it's more recognizable by the first line, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Even for nostalgia buffs, though, the reference to chestnuts, let alone roasted ones, will trigger few remembrances. American chestnut trees once dominated eastern forests, comprising as much as half by volume the hardwood in those woodlands. As you can see, they grew to enormous size, and chestnut lumber was a prized material for all kinds of applications, but especially large and long beams and planks for flooring, for barns, and general construction. In 1905, a fungus from Japan was inadvertently introduced to America, and it literally took these giants down over the century. Today, woodworkers pay exorbitant prices for chestnut lumber reclaimed from old barns and other wooden structures. The wood is a buttery yellow-orange with a straight grain that works well and is adaptable to multiple uses, especially in the wood shop. A tiny number of groves may survive in Minnesota and, and other northern forests, but essentially these wonderful trees are gone from America. It's safe to say that few have ever eaten true American chestnuts roasted on an open fire or not. There are related species resistant to the blight, but none which match the majestic size and beauty of this native hardwood. Arborists and botanists have struggled to develop blight-resistant chestnut trees for decades with little success, until now. A genuine version of the American chestnut is at hand, but there's one tiny little catch that farmers will understand. These blight-resistant trees are genetically modified, so despite decades of safe and effective use of GM plants, foresters and government scientists are grappling with yet another GM controversy. Complicating the research is the tree lifespan. This isn't 90-day corn, after all. This farmer and woodworker thinks it's a no-brainer to endure what appear to be minimal risks, but that's been my futile GM opinion for a long time. But maybe in a century or two, not only will these magnificent trees regain their place in American forests and wood shops, but Christmas revelers could be roasting real American chestnuts over an open fire. And yes, given the way our Christmas repertoire has endured, I bet they will sing the song with the unknown title. Thank you, John. And later, John has a special Christmas commentary about finding that Christmas spirit in an unexpected way. Well, stay with us, because when we come back, a young mom's battle with cancer not once, but twice. Brooke Taylor's story is truly of grit and grace. That's next. NK Seeds believes the best ideas come from farmers solving real-world challenges and creating lasting impact. 
Tim Kelleher understood that when it comes to solving the biggest challenges in agriculture, time is not an ally. Farmers have been cultivating and crossbreeding crops for centuries, but as the speed of problems and progress accelerated, plant science had trouble keeping up. Until 2019, when Kellyhurst's team developed a radical new approach called haploid induction editing, or high edit. Kellyhurst's high edit processes use CRISPR gene editing technology to allow breeders to modify crops in a fraction of the time. With the world population growing and changes in weather patterns, climate, and conditions, it has never been more crucial for science to move quickly. Kelly Herr and his team are dedicated to keeping agriculture ahead of the curve. NK Seeds salutes Tim Kelly Herr and those like him who continue the legacy of Next. Are you thinking of buying a stair lift? This essential free guide will answer all your questions. You can find out how a stair lift can improve your life in a few easy steps with this free guide packed full of detailed information. All of your questions answered. What should I think about when buying a stair lift? What type of stair lift will suit my home? What difference can a stair lift make in my life? Answers to these and many more with this free guide to buying a stair lift. A stair lift can be crucial to you staying independent in your own home. They were invented to make your life easier. And this free practical guide, produced with the help of Acorn Stair Lifts, will make it easier for you to choose the one that's right for you. So call now, 1-800-914-0076 for your free copy of your guide to buying a stair lift and have all of your stair lift questions answered today. 1-800-914-0076. Grit with Grace is brought to you by Zoetis. Your dedication runs deep, and it fuels everything Zoetis does. To protect and support cattle and those who care for them, we are Born of the Bond. Learn more at bornofthebond.com. Well, a year ago, Brooke Taylor knew something wasn't right. After already beating cancer once and all checkups that followed giving the all clear, she received a devastating diagnosis, and one she's handled with grit and grace. At 36 years old, Brooke Taylor has many chapters to her life. After I graduated twice from Oklahoma State, I kind of went on a circuit of working in the food and agricultural industry. From launching a company to growing the business to what it is today, Rule Gone Urban has blossomed into a dream come true. That dream got even better in 2018 when Taylor found out she was pregnant. It was the cherry on top of all of the things that I'd ever wanted. I did notice there was a, a spot in my breast that kept getting a little larger. And so at my 38 week appointment, I literally ripped my shirt off in that doctor's appointment. And I said, I'm not leaving until you feel this. And within 15 minutes, she received a call to schedule an appointment with the specialist the next day. That next Monday, he called me at 8 a.m. and he said, I'm sorry, kiddo, it's cancer. The diagnosis, a very aggressive type of breast cancer that primarily affects women under 40. And by two o'clock, I found out that the child I was carrying was a girl and she entered the world via C-section. Named after her great grandmother, who was a dairy farmer in Indiana. So Elsie James Taylor is the reason that I'm still here today. Days after giving birth, Taylor says she was treated to the entire breast cancer treatment buffet and transitioning into life as a new mom. After that, I chased it with a double mastectomy. I chased it with five weeks of radiation during a pandemic. Um, I had a preventative hysterectomy and oophorectomy. I had a reconstruction surgery and then I was good. Her body had a complete response to chemo. On the cellular level, from what they found at surgery, there was nothing left. She lived life for about a year in complete remission. I was a perfect little cancer student. And then um, Christmas this last year, I was driving home from my parents' house and my family had been sick all week. Christmas time, toddler. It was during that drive a year ago that she felt a swollen lymph node on her neck. So I called my doctors and I went in and I said, I don't know what's going on, but something is broken. Once again, her instincts were correct. My cancer is back and it is very angry. Stage four cancer, heartbreaking news that she shared on her Instagram. Am I devastated? Grandma, what are we? Yes. The anniversary of the day my dad had passed away from cancer 
I learned that the breast cancer had returned. It was in my neck and my clavicle, my ribs, my spine, and then most of my pelvis. The cancer was everywhere. Um, if you have a metastatic triple negative breast cancer, the average lifespan after that diagnosis is 13 months, which is this March um, for me. With the diagnosis came other news, a cancer-fighting medicine that had been in trials for a decade and was just approved by FDA. Because I had responded well to a platinum-based chemo, because I am a BRCA1 um, gene mutant carrier, uh, I checked the boxes for this medicine and it's working for me. That medicine that's helping her survive also caused Taylor to undergo nearly 20 blood transfusions this summer. And I've had two clear scans. And while my doctors won't say that it's gone, it's not there. Taylor says it's a miracle she's here, but the reality of beating two aggressive forms of cancer isn't something that just goes away. A girls' dinner this past week, and we were talking about teachers and who else they might have for pre-K or first grade. And all I could think about was, we're all just, they're all just talking like it's okay and it's normal. And like, I might not even meet those teachers. That's just, it's just my reality. Well, her reality of not knowing if she'd be here to see her daughter off to kindergarten or college isn't holding her back. Next, we'll tell you how Brooke Taylor has turned her battle into a season of giving year round. Over 10,000 years ago, mankind first domesticated cattle. At this exact same time, cattle domesticated us. Our two species have worked together and taken care of each other for centuries. Zoetis is today's advanced answer to that ancient bond. We help make it stronger, healthier, more robust. We are born of the bond. As a little girl, I always wanted to run the combine because it meant I was helping dad. And dad always said, farmers are helpers. I'm teaching that to my daughters, that farmers help our family, our neighbors, and our community. It's what I do at work. I help farmers get the equipment they need. My name is Kim, I'm a farmer, and I work for Case IH. Case IH, built by farmers. Bob Uecker. I was five years old when Lou Gehrig retired from baseball because of ALS. It's been eight decades since Lou's speech, and we still don't have a cure for this devastating disease that affects thousands of Americans every year, including my daughter Leanne. But we are making progress, and we need your help to finally strike out ALS. Please join us by visiting ALS.org. Thank you. Well, the devastating diagnosis isn't stopping Brooke Taylor from spreading joy to others. In fact, it's only fueled her passion, even launching a foundation this year as she's creating a season of giving year round. Brooke Taylor's cancer battle is one she shares on social media, documenting the ups and the downs of fighting cancer twice. I, I would be lying to you if I told you that, that it's not hard. But as a young wife and mom, she also wants to leave a legacy that's bigger than cancer. I had this idea, what if I created something while I was still here? That way I could control its roots and its foundation. And then whenever I graduate to heaven, that people could continue that living legacy for me. That's how the Rule Gone Urban Foundation transpired. The mission, investing in strong women doing brave things with three pillars of support. First pillar of the foundation is investing in B and C students because, gosh, they work hard too. 
They're probably the entrepreneurs of the world that we need. The second is investing in small business owners, which stems from her second season of life. So when I launched my small business, I was living in an apartment in a horse barn. I had no internet. And the third is supporting others with cancer. I just haven't come up with a better name than love bombs for cancer fighters. Taylor first announced the foundation on Instagram, an effort to leave a legacy of giving. We raised almost $25,000 in like 48 hours. That's like grassroots. That's like $5, $10, $50. It's wild. In less than a year, the foundation has raised close to $50,000. And in 2023, the Rule Gone Urban Foundation will start to spread that joy to others. I am the chair of the scholarship committee. We are going to open the application process in the spring, and we're going to give away $15,000 this spring semester. Taylor says as the foundation supports others, she's been able to take Elsie on a few memory building trips of their own this year. So we went to a Mets game, she ran on the field, uh, we saw the Lion King. During that trip, they made a special visit to a jewelry store. Someday, whether I'm here or not here, she will open gifts that we picked out together on the day she graduates high school, the day she graduates college, on her wedding day and the day she becomes a mom. One that Elsie was drawn to was a delicate bracelet with a ladybug. Uh, at that time, all I could think about is, what about when this story becomes full circle and she is has her first baby? And what if I'm not there? And it's just a ladybug. It's just a ladybug, but if that's all I can do, I am going to do it. Taylor knows what it's like to go through monumental moments in life without a parent. As a child who lost a father to cancer, those were the days where I was surrounded by the most people. And I kept looking around to see if he was there. I've never told him on that. And I was six when he died. She's always going to look for me. And so maybe on that day, my husband can pull out one of those gifts from the safe and hand it over, and maybe it'll make it a little less heavy. In a season of giving, Taylor is working to make a difference year round. And she says instead of living life like every day could be her last, she's simply living life to the fullest every day she can. It's not up to someone what the outcome looks like, but it is up to us how we live through it, how we identify the silver linings, how can I ask for me to be a miracle? Well, maybe the miracle is that I'm here right now anyway. Brooke continuously works to raise money for her foundation so she can spread joy for years to come. If you would like to support Brooke's efforts, just visit ruralgoneurban.org. We also have a QR code on the screen. What an amazing woman she is. All right, up next, Clinton Griffiths joins me from snowy South Bend for our annual Christmas in the Country special from turning corn into spirits to the ultimate gift that a retired teacher received this past year. We share stories of joy with our annual Christmas in the Country special next. U.S. Farm Report is produced and distributed by Farm Journal Broadcast. Hello everyone, Merry Christmas. I'm Kurt Coffey with Case IH. In the midst of challenges and hardships facing our industry and frankly the world, it's important that we take time to reflect on the many gifts and blessings in our lives. This is a time to reconnect with the ones that we love, to recognize the blessings in our lives. It's an honor to work alongside each and every one of you in such a noble industry. I'm so grateful as a farm kid for our ability to do together what we love, to support agriculture. From all of us at the Case IH family, we wish you and your family a joyous holiday season and a prosperous new year. Merry Christmas, I'm Clinton Griffiths. And I'm Tyne Morgan. Welcome to this year's edition of Christmas in the Country. And we start this morning with a very big thank you gift from students to a retiring Wisconsin teacher. Larry Plapp decided to retire this past year, a bittersweet decision, but one that came 
with a very special gift. Meet Larry Plapp just once. Well, I taught agriculture for 37 years. And you'll quickly see this ag teacher and FFA advisor had a gift. Had a wonderfully enjoyable career doing that and, and as well as FFA advisor through that time. His gift was the ability to connect with students, especially their freshman year. It was kind of a launching point for the kids as to what they might take as their sophomore, junior, senior year. Maybe that's why out of the close to 5,000 students that Plapp taught, they will forever remember him. He was like the teacher that came into school every day and he wanted to do his job. He would do anything for anyone. The classroom was his calling, which is why the decision to retire this year was not easy. I had toyed with this for, for a while. But he simply knew that it was time. What Plapp didn't know is his retirement would come with a very special gift. I think we were at some leadership conference and he was talking about how another egg teacher from a different school got a tractor for his retirement. And he was like joking to us. He's like, oh, I bet I won't get a tractor for my retirement. A joke at the time turned into the student's new goal. I sent a Facebook message out to his brother and just hoped it kind of got to him and um, reached out to him. And he was really awesome about responding back. But Plapp's brother, who lives in Indiana, knew just the tractor the kids should restore. None of us None. have really restored a tractor. But I've worked, my dad works in a diesel truck shop, but before that he worked in another like auto mechanic shop where they like redid trucks and stuff like that. So my dad was the one who painted the tractor. And last spring, still unbeknownst to Plapp, he was in for the surprise of a lifetime. There was a line item in there for me and I, I knew that. It was the last thing that we were going to do for that awards night. They called him up and gave him a couple personal gifts. And then they said, well, we got to go outside to see the next one. We had to walk outside and all of a sudden they fire up the tractor and I, I, I knew this sound, it's the sound of this, you know, M. And I go, that can't be, just flabbergasted me as to, you know, what had just happened. It wasn't just any tractor. This is a 1954 Super MTA. This was my dad's first farming tractor. And also the tractor Plapp and his brother first learned to drive. When most people get a plaque or other gifts for retirement, Platt received a tractor. It really touched me to the core, and it was an incredible gesture of, of love by these people. It was just something I'll, I'll never forget. And we have so much holiday cheer and joy to share with you. After Christmas, it's not just Santa who needs a rest, but the reindeer. We'll take you to one farm that's all about pampering Santa's biggest helpers. Christmas in the Country is brought to you by Case IH. Case IH equipment is designed, engineered, and built by farmers. See their stories at builtbyfarmers.com. After World War II, my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer, and our neighbors guided my father through his first few years after my grandfather died. This year will be my father's 50th crop. He always reminds me that without the help of our neighbors, there would never have been a first. My name is Randy. I'm a farmer, and I make the best damn tractors in the world because I owe it to my neighbors. Case IH, built by farmers. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get Nano's revolutionary technology for just $297. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Nano hearing aids for just $297. 
$97. Plus, we'll add a portable charging case and ship your order absolutely free. The CIC Recharge has a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Why keep missing out on important conversations or waste thousands of dollars? Call and get two CIC Recharge hearing aids for only $297 and free shipping. 800-317-7966. Again, that's 800-317-7966. So what's the secret to making the best tasting bourbon or whiskey? One company says it all starts with a home raised product. And as we found, Flyover Whiskey is all about putting farmers first. From the hard charge of harvest to the silence of winter slumber, celebrating the end of a season can be lackluster for row crop farmers. Grain in the bin doesn't gift as well as steaks on the grill. You fed cattle and you grew that into a steak and you were able to share that. Well, we didn't really have that with just row crops. You know, you can actually use grain that you grew and make something out of it to share. From field to flask, Flyover Whiskey is helping farmers bottle the season's harvest one micro batch at a time. We custom distill whiskey for farmers from their own corn. It's very personalized what we do. Head distiller Devin Beerkum starts with 15 to 20 pounds of corn. We've had guys who bring in dried sweet corn, gives the whiskey a little, definitely a lot sweeter kind of taste. Even a corn variety between a white corn as like the common yellow corn, um, that whiter corn has a kind of a sweeter taste to it. Um, how clean the corn is really makes a difference. Field by field, every bottled batch is uniquely original. Hybrid does have an effect. Uh, we haven't really pinned down what, what's the best brand, you know, DeKalb, Pioneer, Bex, whatever, but uh, definitely notice a difference. And then especially going from yellow corn to white corn, red corn, that has a huge difference on flavor. Once the corn is mashed, it's left to ferment before heading to the still. Usually just one of many as efficient small batch processing requires lots of equipment to keep up with demand. The goal, one load of corn distilled into six custom bottles. You have to pay attention a lot more. You know, it's, you're not dealing with hundreds of gallons at a time, you're dealing with 10 gallons at a time. And so your margin for error is a lot smaller. Pride in the product is also transferred to the label. Part of the fun of it is being able to personalize that label um, down to what field it came out of, um, maybe the price that price that it was sold at, at the time of harvest, things like that. I just think it makes it really special. Special moments now preserved. It's a two month turn from bushel to bottle, as now other farmers ask for a shot. There's a lot of guys in Kansas that want me to do a wheat beer. There's guys that ask me about doing vodka or rum with sugar beet sugar. As those requests ferment, the team is pouring themselves into giving the gift of corn. Not a whole lot of gifts you can give to a farmer that they've never gotten before. <laughs> so it's also a really, really special gift. Harvest in a bottle, distilled into the perfect present for any season. What would Christmas be without Santa and his reindeer? We visit a farm where Dasher and Dancer get some much needed R&R next on Christmas in the Country. We found Tendovo through a recommendation from our chemical rep and suggested it knowing that we have tough weeds and weeds that need a better chemical product to control them. Weed control for our operation is very important, especially in soybeans. We have a lot of weeds now that are becoming resistant to certain chemistries. Tendovo helped for us relieve our water hemp pressure and it took care of the weeds with great residual all the way to our second pass. When you think of a herbicide, you don't think of faster canopy or better stand. You usually relate it to diminished stand or slower canopy. Tendovo had a longer residual than our normal herbicide program. But when I actually saw the difference between Tendovo and our regular herbicide program, I didn't believe it was because of the herbicide. We looked for many other things first to confirm it. It was very obvious that it was the Tendovo that created a better stand. But with Tendovo, even though it was a small trial for us this year, 
We did notice a two bushel per acre yield increase. My plan for 2023 is to use Tendovo on a larger scale. I hope to have it on a majority of my acres. I hope to use it even more in the future. I feel like as farmers, we're charged with stewardship of the land and we're here to provide a clean, healthy, safe food for people and animals. And I believe that Tendovo fits that program. Tendovo was an all around easy product to use. It took away having to mix multiple chemicals, made it very simple for spraying, it was just an overall great product. I absolutely would recommend Tendovo to anybody. Well, Santa can't make the trip alone on Christmas Eve. He's only able to do so with his reliable reindeer. So just how are Santa's reindeer pampered and loved throughout the year? For one family in southern Missouri, raising reindeer is quite the treat. It's a song that captured kids' hearts when it first topped the charts in 1949. But do you recall? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer then became a television special hit 15 years later. Well, Donner, where's the new member of the family? After all, if he's going to be on my team someday, he'd better get to know me. <laughs> but unlike the fictional characters in the movie and songs, reindeer here at Prescott Family Reindeer Farm, we obviously have our real reindeer, Noel and Tinsel, are actually real. We have people that come out all the time and say, Okay, but what are these? And we tell them, you know, they are real reindeer. Sarah Prescott will tell you the story behind this reindeer farm is magical. Being on a family farm means a lot of different things to us. It means uh, tradition, it means, you know, building something together as a family. This 240 acres in Van Zandt, Missouri is rooted in a deep desire to give everyone a full Christmas experience. They're very stout, hardy animals, so uh, we wanted it not to just be a petting zoo, but we wanted you to be able to fall in love with our animals just the way that we do. It all started three years ago when the Prescotts moved to southern Missouri from central Illinois. While we were in central Illinois, we did a ton of educational opportunities for people to come out to the farm and, um, and like I said, share our story, visit with the animals, and when we moved here, we wanted to expand on that. The Prescotts were well equipped for raising beef cattle, but they decided to venture into something new. We didn't want to impose on other businesses here in our local area, so we really tried to find a different uh, niche market. And that love was a gift during a visit to another farm in Illinois. And that was the Snowman's Reindeer Farm. And uh, they are amazing people, and they actually helped us to fall in love with reindeer just on our visit there. When the Prescotts moved to Missouri, Sarah started researching how to raise reindeer. So we raised the reindeer very much like we raise the cattle. Cattle and reindeer are both ruminant animals, but reindeer just prefer to eat different treats. Our reindeer actually are not on grass. Reindeer actually don't eat much grass. Their uh, main diet out in nature would be a lot more leaves and sticks. Sarah calls them her pampered pets with big fans and pools to play in during the heat of the summer. But as you can imagine, it's in the winter months that these reindeer really shine. We're super excited that Santa and Mrs. Claus join us each weekend from the North Pole. Um, they come down, obviously, to visit with the reindeer. Uh, we hope that Noel and Tinsel will make the flight team this year and be able to be flying around uh, for Christmas Eve. With both Santa and Mrs. Claus on the farm, plus photo props and other fun experiences, the Prescotts work each winter to bring others an enchanting experience. We also have crafts, a gift shop. Um, you can write letters to Santa, hot cocoa, games. Basically, all the things that you need to check off your Christmas tradition list. This experience isn't created overnight. The Prescotts and their three kids start decorating for Christmas in July, all in hopes of helping others make memories in the most magical way. Still ahead, we're off to Tennessee and a farm tourism destination that is all about apples at its core. U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by Pioneer. Pioneer combines leading edge R&D with rigorous local testing to create seed innovations proven to thrive in your fields. Pioneer, 
What's Next happens here. Registration for the 2023 Top Producer Summit is open. Join fellow farmers and great speakers in Nashville, Tennessee, January 23rd through the 25th. Take a few days away from the farm to discover business opportunities, gain invaluable insights, and increase your competitive advantage. The event is the perfect combination of business education, networking, and fun, including a night out on the town at Johnny Cash's Bar. For more information and to register, visit tpsummit.com. <coughs> oh man I can't believe I'm missing this Okay grandma <laughs> I see you Don't get stuck at home with the flu a flu shot is the best way to prevent the flu and its potentially serious complications. It keeps you, your community, and loved ones protected. Don't get flu FOMO. Learn more at getmyflushot.org. Is your closet cramped and cluttered? Well, now there's Space Triangles, the clever new hanging device that fits over any hanger to save you closet space in seconds. Now you can vertically hang multiple items, guaranteeing that you'll have up to 70% more space in your closet. Watch, your closet can go from messy to marvelous in no time with ease. The secret is the ingenious slip-over design that secures the hangers in a perfect vertical position. It snugly fits all types of hangers to save you space. Order now to get an 18-piece set of Space Triangles for just $9.99. But wait, there's breaking news. Space Triangles may be discontinued. Due to supply chain shortages, Space Triangles is stopping manufacturing immediately. There is a strict limit of one closet pack per order while supplies last. Order now. To order, call 1-800-942-5170. Call or visit spacetriangles.com. So call 1-800-942-5170 now. We don't want to forget the importance of our Christmas tree growers. One tree taking center stage, the White House Christmas tree. It was received by First Lady Jill Biden, the 18 and a half foot Conqueror fir, now in the blue room of the White House. It came from Paul and Pam Shaler's Evergreen Acres Farm in Auburn, Pennsylvania. The farm was named the 2022 Grand Champion at the National Christmas Tree Association's National Tree and Wreath Contest. Well, how do you get those ginormous trees into position? Check out what they did in Omaha, Nebraska at the Durham Museum. They hooked the 40 foot blue spruce up to two big trucks and dragged it right through the museum entrance. As you can see, people had to get out of the way fast. The tree was donated by two people coming right out of their yard. The owners say they bought it back in 1987 on a dead plant sale for $5. It was just about a foot tall then, a little bigger now. I love the smell of trees and think about this smell for a moment. A cup of apple cider. So good. The apple and everything you can do with it is fueling a Tennessee agritourism site this time of year. Charles Denny of the University of Tennessee has more on the bright red season. The Apple Barn and Cider Mill is a working farm along the road to the National Park in Sevierville with lots of agricultural enterprises and an agritourism destination during the holidays. A winery and creamery, gift shops and two restaurants. But please, Santa, don't put us on the naughty list for the pun. At its core, how about them apples? Vibrant orchards frame the property and it's the robust apple crop that drives everything here. It was a beef cattle and tobacco farm that we transformed into a fruit crop the, the following years. And, and a little later, we planted 4,000 apple trees. Kent Kilpatrick's family started the business some 50 years ago. And everything you see here really got going when they made the switch from tobacco to apples, based on a recommendation from their county UT Extension agent at the time. And that became the basis for the Apple Barn Insider Mill, how we make all the fried apple pies and the, the things, the farm to table ingredients are, are grown right here. And, and the exciting part is when you can come uh, today, just over my shoulder, this banging is we're jugging cider and we're making fresh apple cider with a sweet tart aromatic blend that dad came up with. You might say overly successful agriculture led to all of this. In the early days, this farm produced more apples than they could use. So they decided to try cider. 
Sweet, fresh cider is produced with a family recipe, and then gallon jugs are filled here on site. The Kilpatricks take pride in developing an authentic flavor where you can really taste the apples. Also here, you'll find plenty of other foods and items made from apples. Uh, one of the things that uh, we say is come see, smell, and taste the fruits of our labor. UT Extension agents Crystal Blankenship and Megan Brown recently hosted their podcast, Sit a Spell, from the Apple Barn. They appreciate the connection between this business and Extension, including ties to 4-H and the food science in making the cider. Well, they have to go through a pasteurization process in order to do that, um, which in, uh, brings in our food safety. They are obviously using our agricultural resources with horticulture, pest and disease management. I think it's really cool. I have been coming to the apple barn my entire life and had no idea that it was a family farm. Um, and after I heard their story, it just, it's so endeared to me now. Um, I love the history behind it. I love how they started selling apple pies and apple cider out of their garage and what it's grown into today. today. More history to be made in 2023. The Apple Barn will expand to include an interactive display area where customers will get an even closer view of how the cider is made. For now, the busy holiday season is underway with lots of merry red all around. This is Charles Denny reporting. Well, is the spirit of Christmas still alive these days? John Phipps says yes, and it's alive and well. Where he found it, that's next. And we're excited to give this away this Christmas. Melissa Oaks of Hubbard Lake, Michigan is the grand prize winner of our Case IH holiday giveaway. She's won the Farm All Sea Pedal Tractor. Won't that be fun under the tree this year? Congratulations, Melissa, and thanks to everyone who entered. More Christmas in the country when we return. The NRCS Conservation Stewardship Program cost shares more than 150 practices on farms and ranches. Visit your local service center or farmers.gov today. NK Seeds believes the best ideas come from farmers solving real world challenges and creating lasting impact. Tim Kellyher understood that when it comes to solving the biggest challenges in agriculture, time is not an ally. Farmers have been cultivating and crossbreeding crops for centuries, but as the speed of problems and progress accelerated, plant science had trouble keeping up. Until 2019, when Kelly Hur's team developed a radical new approach called haploid induction editing, or high edit. Kelly Hur's high edit processes use CRISPR gene editing technology to allow breeders to modify crops in a fraction of the time. With the world population growing and changes in weather patterns, climate, and conditions, it has never been more crucial for science to move quickly. Kelly Herr and his team are dedicated to keeping agriculture ahead of the curve. NK Seeds salutes Tim Kelly Herr and those like him who continue the legacy of next. I value the good things in life. Great food, comfortable clothes, the perfect pour at the end of a long day, and the hardworking people who bring quality products to life. So I've teamed up with my friends at Nutrinac Solutions and Farm Journal to explore the journey from seed to shelf and to get to know the growers who dedicate their lives to making it happen. How are growers feeding a growing world? Come with me to find out. I'm Brett Griffin. This is Leading the Field. Real stories, real successes, real quick. The Conservation at Work video series features innovation on working farms and ranches, all in less than two minutes per video. There is something for every operation, from erosion control in fields and high traffic areas to management of water, grazing, woodlands, buffers, fencing, high tunnel construction, and more. Get ideas for cost sharing projects with NRCS. Farmer to farmer, see what's possible at farmers.gov conservation. Well, in the busy rush of the holiday season, sometimes it can feel as if the meaning of the holiday is getting lost in all the hustle and bustle. But John Phipps recently stumbled onto the Christmas spirit among a group of very wise men. I unexpectedly stumbled into the real Christmas spirit recently. A close friend invited me to its church men's group meeting. About 20 of us gathered for a fish fry dinner prepared by a few of the members. Then they had their meeting, beginning with a brief devotional, 
and followed with discussion of the group's activities. I was one of the younger attendees, which is typical today for such groups. As a visitor, I was sort of detached from the proceedings, but I remember thinking at the time, if Major Henry Martin Roberts had any idea in 1876 that his manual, Roberts Rules of Order, would become the liturgical guide for meetings of every size, like this one, a century and a half later, he likely would have been astounded. Like so many occasions in my life, the familiar process of conducting the communal business of assemblies like this one moved from step through familiar step in a reassuring ritual. Beginning with the call to order, an officer reports, carefully noted and duly approved with motions and seconds, we arrived at old business, aptly named for this group. The presiding officer led through discussions of projects and activities underway or upcoming. There was a focus on Christmas-related activities, of course, like toys and clothes for the needy and scheduling bell ringers for Salvation Army kettles. Their most ambitious long-term project, however, was Meals on Wheels, providing drivers to, to deliver food prepared by the local hospital. From their words, I could tell they felt an additional significance in this year-round ministry during December. Many of the men, like my friend, had been doing it for decades. Soon the conversation devolved into swapping opinions about the best way to run a delivery route, particular encounters with the grateful recipients, and anecdotes undoubtedly shared before, but appreciated nonetheless. Sitting there, I was moved by their long and faithful service to their community. Then I realized they were literally the embodiment fulfilling the ancient Christmas promise from a night long ago. Good men, bringing peace and goodwill to all. Thanks, John, and we'd like to thank you all for watching. We hope you have a happy and safe holiday season. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. U.S. Farm Report is produced and distributed by Farm Journal Broadcast.